Hi everybody, my name is Brad and I'm here to welcome you to Children's Chapel at Seminole Heights Methodist Church, a time for kids to worship God together. Today we're going to sing and we're going to dance and we're going to learn some Bible stories and we're going to pray together. So get ready because we're about to begin. Thanks for singing with us. So today's story is about waiting, waiting for Jesus. Since we're near Christmas, it's kind of what we're doing now. We're waiting for the day where we get to remember Jesus is coming down to earth. We're in a special time of the church year, Advent, where we get to do that together. So I hope we could learn today about what waiting has looked like through all the Bible. God's story, preparing for Jesus. So part of God's story is about how he prepared us for Jesus, and it begins like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He then created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. He trusted them with life as long as they obeyed one rule. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve didn't trust God, and they disobeyed. Now Adam, Eve, everyone would have to die, separating us from God forever. This made God very sad, but he had a plan. He knew that he could still save his people through a great rescue, Jesus. Jesus was a big deal. And just like any big deal, people had to get ready for him. It's like before a big movie comes out, you watch the previews so you know what's coming. Well, Jesus was such a big deal that his previews started thousands of years before he came. The first preview is about a man named Abraham. God promised to make Abraham the father of God's special family. God gave Abraham one special son to start the family, Isaac. Now Abraham knew that one day he would have to die because of what happened in the garden. Every time Abraham did something wrong, God could have said, Okay, because you've done this bad thing, you now have to die. But he didn't. Instead, God said, How about killing a lamb instead? It can die so you don't have to. Thank you, said Abraham. But one day, God asked Abraham to do something different. God said, Okay, because you've done this bad thing, your son Isaac has to die. This made Abraham very sad. But he decided to trust him anyway, even though this meant that he would never have the giant family God had promised. When Isaac asked where the sacrifice was, Abraham said, God will provide it. And guess what? He did! A ram died so Isaac didn't have to. The second preview happened hundreds of years later. Abraham's family, the Israelites, had gotten huge but they were stuck as slaves in Egypt under a mean king called Pharaoh. He would not let the Israelites leave, so God said, 
Okay, because Pharaoh has done this bad thing, every firstborn son in the land of Egypt has to die. The bad news was this meant that the Israelite sons would have to die along with the Egyptian sons. But the good news was God, once again, created a rescue plan. God said, anyone who kills a lamb and paints the blood on their door will be saved. The destroyer will pass over your house. The lambs died so the sons didn't have to. Over and over again, when there was trouble, God sent a sheep to die so his people didn't have to. Until finally, God revealed his final rescue plan. The previews were over. It was time for the feature presentation. At last, Jesus the rescuer came. He lived on earth just like us, but then he died to take away the punishment we deserved. Jesus died so we don't have to. But guess what else? Jesus didn't stay dead like the sheep. He came back to life and went up to heaven. Now we can be close to God again. And one day, he'll recreate a perfect world for God's whole family to live in forever. Just like the original garden, but better. And that's the story of how God prepared us for Jesus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Death separated us from God. God planned a great rescue. He gave us previews. A ram died so Isaac didn't have to. Lambs died so the Israelite sons didn't have to. Finally, Jesus died so we don't have to. But Jesus came back to life. Now death can't separate us from God. And that's a part of God's story. I am so glad you're here with me. I'm Pastor Tiffany F. And today in our Bible story, we heard about people getting ready for Jesus to come, right? Well, today is the first Sunday of Advent. It's a special time and it's four weeks before Christmas Eve. Now, every Sunday during Advent, we light a candle. So, this week, we're going to light the first candle, the candle of hope. And each week, we'll light a different candle. So, we'll start with hope. We have love, joy, peace. And then in the middle, on Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle. Each of these candles helps us to remember something really important about Jesus. So, this week, our candle of hope helps us to remember that we can always have hope in God. No matter what's going on, even if things seem really hard or really bad or, you know, with all of the stuff going on in the world, we know that God is always with us, that God always loves us, and God is always there for us. So we can have hope in God no matter what is going on in the world, okay? So our word for today is hope, and it means that we can trust in God for the future, to, for God to take care of us and to continue caring for us, just like God cared for God's people all those years ago, just like they hoped for Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, to be born over 2,000 years ago. So we can be thankful and we can always remember that we can have hope in God, no matter what is happening, that God is always there for us. Now you're invited to continue in worship with us, to stand up and sing as we close our time together.
Thanks for spending time with us today. I hope that you had fun, you learned something new, and you get to enjoy God today. If you'll join with me, I'd like to end our time today with a little bit of prayer. If you'd repeat after me. God, thank you for sending Jesus. We're looking forward to Christmas, where we think about how you gave us your son, because you love us. Thank you, God, for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for uh, coming here today and spending time with us. Um, we'd love to have you for worship at 1030 if you'd like to be there. Otherwise, um, we'll be here next week at 930 in the morning for some more Children's Chapel. Thanks again. It was so good seeing you. Goodbye.